if you're old enough to remember DVDs, you may remember that when the DVD player would just kind of sit there, it would go into sort of a screensaver mode, and this little DVD square would bounce around the uh, screen. Um, and you can remember this probably by this fantastic office um, cold open where uh, Michael Scott's talking to his crew, and they're watching the screen for this little DVD to bounce around, and then that little square to hit the hit the exact corner of the TV, and they just um, are completely ignoring him. So if you haven't seen that, definitely check it out. Um, what we're gonna today, we're gonna make this little DVD bouncing around logo. It's very simple in After Effects, not a whole lot to it. Um, and so let's dive on in. I just want to keep on watching this because it's hilarious. But let's move on and let's get into it. So I uh, opened up After Effects. I'm gonna make a new composition. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a simple um, composition that is uh, small. So a small square because that's that little DVD is a square logo. So we're just gonna make this. Uh, we'll just do like 800 by 800. Pretty, pretty good size, but keeping it square, that way it's nice and high res. And we can keep this, really this depends on however long you want to make your composition, but we're going to just make it maybe just one, let's just do two minutes. All depending on how long you want to make this thing last. So um, then we'll hit OK. Actually, we'll go ahead and rename this and we'll call this logo. And I'm going to hit OK. So that's going to make this um, box here. And this is our composition. This is where our logo will be. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import a logo. And so I've pulled the DVD logo from the internet. And I'm going to drop it into, let's see if I can find it here. This one, I think, let's see, this PNG file. So I'm going to click on that. And this is just a um, the DVD with a transparent background. So I'm going to drag that down here and drop it in. So I'm going to just scale that down to try to be sort of in the center here. And then I'm going to make a uh, color in the background that will be our, our background color. So I'm going to go to... Um, composition actually I'm gonna to go to layer new and solid and I'm just gonna drop a color in here we'll make this um, like a, a bright green or let's let's go like a blue okay hit okay and hit okay and that's gonna drop that in there I'm gonna put that below the logo the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna uh, use this DVD logo to cut out the um, basically this stencil it out this background so the way I'm gonna do that is with the DVD logo on top and you do want to make sure your logo is uh, some sort of PNG um, logo and then I'm going to go to down here where it says toggle switches and modes I'm going to click on that and it's going to give me a couple of options where uh, right here is where it says track mat and that's what we want so I'm going to click on where it says none and I'm going to go to alpha so that's going to basically um, cut out whatever is here uh, so I'm going to click on alpha and then it's going to cut it out but I actually want to do the opposite of that so I'm going to go to alpha inverted and so now it's going to cut this out so you can see now that this is just a uh, blue square with the DVD logo cut out and that's what we want so now I'm going to make a new composition I'm going to go over here to the project uh, window I'm going to click on this button there I'm going to make a new composition we'll call this screen saver and 1920 by 1080 is what we want there and we'll do the same um, duration as the actual logo um, composition and then we hit OK and this looks good so we can turn off this little button there so we can see a nice black screen that looks good now I'm going to drag in the logo composition into our main comp and it's pretty big so we can go ahead and scale this down so I'm going to scale this to whatever feels right so somewhere around in there so the next thing I'm going to do is you know I thought maybe if we could just um, take the DVD logo and then um, you know set some keyframes on the position and move it around but then if you do that it's going to go probably really fast here and then really slow here but we wanted to keep the same speed the entire time um, so that would be really hard to try to space those out to make sure it looks like it's following the same speed the entire time so the first thing we're gonna do is I wanna set um, some basically some guidelines to where the middle of this logo is so you know if this thing's moving around it's gonna hit the edge I don't want to I don't need it to go past the edge I want it to bounce right here like it's bouncing off the edge so the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna put my logo right on the edge right about there maybe fine-tune it with the arrow keys that's good and then I'm gonna set some rule uh, some guides so I'm going to do I'm gonna hit command R and it's gonna bring up my ruler on the side and if I bring my mouse up there click and drag down it's gonna bring some guides in there and so I'm gonna put it right where that crosshair is right in the dead center of that logo so that's good there so that's gonna be our bottom I'm gonna drag this over to the side and I'm holding down shift so that it locks into that that plane so somewhere around in there is good and then I'm going to do the same thing over here I'm going to click on the left side of that ruler and put it right on top of that crosshair and then we're going to do the same thing up here clicking and dragging holding down shift while I drag it so it stays nice and straight 
and there we go right about there and then we'll do this side okay so that's pretty good all right now we can put this really wherever we want right there is fine so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a mask on this layer so uh, the way to do that i'm going to make sure my layer is selected and then i'm going to hit g on the keyboard for my pen tool and now we can just begin drawing um, basically up the path that we want it to follow so uh, i'm going to go i can really go anywhere it doesn't matter so uh, one thing i want to do is i'm going to be clicking on this on these rulers and so i can't quite click on it because if i do it's going to put this little arrow for me to move the guide around so I don't want to do that I want to lock those guides down so I'm going to go to view and lock guides now I can click right on top of it and it's okay all right so I'm going to put my pen tool right on top of our uh, crosshair there and I'm going to click once and now it's going to start making a, a mask for this um, logo so now we can make this pretty random uh, so I'm going to click and I uh, got that point there so I'm going to go somewhere else on this uh, ruler that we set and I'm going to click up here so now I'm just going to draw the path randomly and eventually I'm going to get to where it hits the corner, the dead corner of the screen. Um, but not until a little bit. So if we make this two minutes long, I'm going to make it, you know, we want the anticipation to build a little bit, just like the office episode. So um, we're going to do a couple that are really close and then one that will hit dead center right before it begins the loop again. So this is good here we will come down here maybe this one will be really close so you know really the dead center would be right here so we're gonna put the point maybe right there so it's gonna hit there and it's gonna hit there and it's gonna maybe come down here again it's gonna come up here and then we'll make this one hit dead center of this logo there it's right about there it's gonna hit right in the middle so then we'll go here so then I'm going to bring the last point right, basically right on top of where this one is. And I don't want to click and close this mask. Uh, I want to keep this as an open path. So I don't want to put my, my uh, pen tool right on top of that box. You see a little circle pops up. I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to click over here to the side and make a new point. And then I'm going to click and drag it over to be right on top of that point there. Okay, so that's close enough. All right, so now we have our path and we need our logo to follow this path. And the way to do that is by going into our mask toggle this down go to mask path so we're going to click on this and we can copy it and then i'm going to click on logo i'm going to hit p on the keyboard for my position tool or my position parameter and i'm click on position and i'm going to hit command and paste and so now we have a path and it should follow problem is is it scaled this thing in a weird way and it moved it all over the place and that's not really what we want so i'm going to back out a little bit so you can see what's going on so here's our original path, and then here's the path that it pasted in there. And that's because we uh, scaled our logo down. And that's fine. That's, that's what we want to do so we know exactly where we're going to be bouncing around. Um, so the way we want to fix this is I, I tried a few things. I tried to scale it down and move it around, and it just didn't quite work. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a, a null object that I can connect our logo to, that I can, I can scale it down, scale it up, and move it around to get it back in position. Um, that's just going to be the easiest thing to do. So I'm going to go to layer, new, and then I'm going to go to null object. And this is just basically a fake layer um, that we can use as a, like a, a controller. So um, we'll just keep it as null two is fine. And so I'm going to click on logo and I'm going to grab my little pick whip here, this little swirly line, click and drag it up here to the null and let go. And so now whatever this null does, this logo is going to do. So now I want to go back to my logo and I'm going to hit S on the keyboard. I'm going to put my scale back at 100%. So remember that we, we set ours to 27%. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to make this 100. So it's going to scale that way back up and that's fine. So now with that one back at its normal size, we can go to our uh, null object and I'm going to scale this down to 27. So I'm going to hit S on the keyboard and we'll scale this down to 27. All right. So if I click on logo, now our path should look somewhat similar to, I can actually go now go into my mask logo or go to the logo, hit M on the keyboard. I'm just going to delete this math so it so I don't see it anymore. So there we have our our new path that it's going to follow. And what we need to do is move our null object back to where we originally started. So I'm going to click on the null object and I'm just going to bring this back down here. Oops. Click on the null object. I want to make sure I'm just have the null selected. I'm going to click and drag so hopefully those points aren't moving along with it. Yep. So everything's moving together. That's good. So I'm going to click on the null again. 
and I'm gonna try to oops I'll make sure I click that crosshair apparently that's what I want to grab because if I grab the actual logo then it's gonna move those points so I'm gonna come back down here so somewhere around here is where our original setup was so we want to try to get these points right back to where we where we started so what we can really do is focus on this one because this is where it's going to hit in the in the dead center of that corner um, so I'm going to uh, click on the null object and just adjust it with my um, arrow keys to try and get it just right on that spot okay so that's that looks pretty good so now I believe our logo will follow this path that we have set out problem is this only lasts you know three seconds so what we need to do is I'm going to click and drag all of our keyframes and then I'm going to if you if you kind of zoom in you can see it's sort of spread them out in a weird way and that's just based on the distances so that's what we want and now I want to um, click and drag all those make sure they're all highlighted I'm gonna hold down option and I'm gonna click on that last keyframe right there and then I can drag it all the way out to the very end of our composition I'm just gonna drag it all the way down to the end just like that so now our logo bounces around and it's going to hit the dead center right there you may want to make some adjustments no that, that feels pretty good and then it comes back to our spot so hopefully whenever we hit here it will if you if, if you export this um, exactly right it will begin the loop again so this is our very beginning keyframe this is our last point and it's pretty close where it is so that will be your loop all right so that's how you would do that next thing is the color um, so the way I'm gonna do the color is I'm gonna go into logo I'm gonna hit you on the keyboard so I can see all of my keyframes and these are all the keyframes when they hit the corners or hit the size really and that's where we're gonna want to make our color adjustments so the way I'm gonna do that I'm gonna go up to with our logo layer selected I'm gonna go to layer uh, let's see I'm gonna go to effect color correction and change uh, change color so with this effect we can just pick a color that we want to constantly change and how you know, we can change it through the lightness and saturation and hue but we're really going to focus on the hue so all you need to do is click on this where it says color to change I'm going to click this eyedropper and I want to be changing this blue color right here and this really works for when you have solid colors so when I click that eyedropper it changes the square to that blue we already have and so now I want to set a keyframe for this blue so that's going to be my, my very first color and really my very last color but for now we just want to set a uh, keyframe for this hue transform so I'm going to click on that little stopwatch right there and now with my layer selected that logo layer I'm going to hit you on the keyboard and you can see I have a new keyframe right there so we're going to move through this play this uh, timeline and change the colors as it hits the wall so uh, what I want to do is move my playhead down to the next point where it hits the wall and you can I'm kind of holding down shift when I move this playhead and it will snap to a certain keyframe and that's what we want to do so that looks good there so now I can set another keyframe for that blue which is right there so nothing's changed yet um, but now I want to move ahead just one keyframe because it's going to change instantly as it hits that wall and the way I'm going to do that I'm just going to hit uh, the number three on my keyboard yours is probably like page up or page down um, but I'm going to hit three and because mine's custom uh, kind of change mine around a little bit or yeah, I think you can maybe hit this next keyframe button up there but uh, just move ahead one keyframe and then we want to change our color so I'm going to go up to where it says hue transform click and drag those numbers and we'll just go to a different color like purple so now if you zoom into your uh, timeline I'm just using plus and minus to do that you can see we've made a new keyframe key just one over and I want to and it's highlighted so I want to copy that keyframe so I'm going to hit command C to copy it I'm going to zoom back out a little bit and now I can drag my playhead down here to this next spot click on my latest keyframe I'm going to hit command C to copy sort of click off click back on and paste it right there Sometimes it acts a little weird and it sort of tries to paste all the keyframes. I don't know what it's doing, but uh, just be really careful when you start making these keyframes and make sure that you just do it nice and slow and do one by one. So now we have that purple in between there. So I have my keyframe set right there. You can you can tell I'm on the keyframe with this blue diamond down here is highlighted. So I'm gonna move ahead one keyframe there, and now we can change our color. So I'm gonna go up to hue transform and just drag that down a little bit more. That's good. So if I zoom in, I have that new keyframe. So I'm gonna copy that. Command C, zoom out, drag down here, click that layer, and I'm going to paste it. There we go. So that one worked. Move ahead a keyframe, change our color, we'll go to red. I'm going to copy that keyframe right there, pull my playhead down here to the next time it hits the wall. And let me try if I paste it, 
Yeah, see, it messes it up right there. I'm not sure what it's trying to do, but you, you have to kind of click off and click back on. So I want to cop, click on that last keyframe, copy it, paste it, move ahead a keyframe, change my color. So be wary of that. Copy, move down here, drag that playhead to that next spot right there. I'm just going to click off, click on again, paste it, move ahead a keyframe. Pull that color or something else. That's good. Copy the keyframe. Slide down here. Again, just click off. Click on. Click on Hue Transform. Make sure I'm pasting it on the Hue Transform. Copy that keyframe. Paste. Move ahead. Zoom in a little bit, copy that keyframe. Zoom out, move down some. There's my next one. Click off, click back on, paste it. So this is our last point. Drag it down here. So here is where I want to, I don't want to go all the way to the end. I want to go just about to the end because I'm going to back up one keyframe and I'm going to paste in that orange color that we made. But now I want this next change, that last frame to go back to the color that we started with. So I'm going to come all the way back down to the beginning, all the way back down. And I'm going to highlight, oops, I'm going to highlight this keyframe here, copy it, go all the way back down here and I want to paste it on that last frame boom so as it hits there it's going to loop back to the very beginning and start over so that should do it so I'm going to back out here and we can see that it moves hits there change colors change 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 and hits the center comes up, bounces, and we're back to the beginning, which is right there. Awesome. Okay. If you want to get that just right, where mine's not quite there, you can see where it kind of slides from there to there. It sort of slides over. You could you could copy this position keyframe here. You could come down here, delete this one, and just paste it in there. So now it should be dead on. Yep. Okay. So that's it right there so the next thing I would probably do just for fun to give it that old DVD look is I would go to um, layer new adjustment layer and I would probably add an effect on here I'd go to noise add a little bit of noise maybe three or four percent let's go with four and we want to make sure that our background isn't fully black I'm gonna do layer new solid I'm gonna make this just slightly not black not black and hit okay and then I'm going to drag that down here to the very bottom that's probably a little bit too light so then I'm going to change that color back a little bit like that there we go and then we could also maybe do a, a new adjustment layer and we could we could even rename these I'm just hitting enter to rename those so we could do glow and I can do um, effect and go to stylize and glow and then we can bump that radius up a good bit and we can bring that threshold maybe back a little bit the intensity down for sure we just want just a little bit of glow on there it's an old TV something like that maybe a tad bit more So now it's got sort of this old, old TV vibe going on. So you get your noise moving. Now the noise is going to add a little bit more of a render time to it, um, but I think it adds a, a good touch. You maybe want to make this like 30 frames a second or something, but there you go. So that's uh, that's it. That's that's how you would do it. Uh, it's probably a little more complicated than I thought, um, but I think this is pretty spot on. So if you did need to make this shorter, if you're like, ah, this is way too long, I need to make this 
be uh, maybe like a minute or something. So what you could do is I would go to the minute point here, which is right, uh, right there. I'm gonna hit in on the keyboard to bring that um, bracket right there. And then I can click on the logo and the null object, actually just the logo, hit U on the keyboard and here's all our keyframes. So I can click these, I can highlight all of our keyframes. And then if I click the very last one down here and hold down option, click and drag, it's gonna kind of squeeze these down um, proportionately. So something like that. So now it, it would go much faster. Okay, so that's it. Uh, thanks for the challenge, and I hope this uh, works well for you. And uh, we will see you on the next one. Enjoy. Bye. Wait for it. Like something that you have to look for. Sort of a where's Waldo? Oh! <laughs> All right. All right. Let's quit while we're ahead. That was so awesome.